Coach Butler from Holy Trinity, National Federation of High Schools Coach of the Year for 2012. Congratulations. That's a great honor. A couple years ago, you got it for the girls and now for the boys. I think it uh, speaks loud and clear to the dedication that you've got. Uh, your thoughts on getting that award and what it means for you, your program, and the school? Uh, it's nice. I um, no, yeah, I don't coach for, the, for, the, for those awards. They're nice uh, to be recognized like that. Everybody, of course, likes to be appreciated. So, you know, I appreciate it. There's a lot of great coaches in Florida that, you know, that could have got it. Roy Harrison's up there every year. Um, you know, a lot of great boys coaches. So, yeah, it was, it was pretty nice. Well, we've got another cross-country season just a couple of weeks away. Uh, this year is going to be a little bit different. Starting a little bit earlier, the Wickham Jamboree is going to be an officially sanctioned meet, part of the regular season, and the season ends a little bit earlier, so obviously some challenges. Uh, how are you approaching the season? Uh, well, the summer is the key. I mean, with the with a couple week earlier ending to the season, uh, the Jamboree, uh, we're going to um, we're going to run it same boys and girls. We're going to be in uniforms. Going to be like a JV race. We're not going to run a varsity race. We're just going to run JV. Um, it's been a, uh, a good summer. It's not been a great summer. Uh, I graduated a lot of guys last year. I graduated four solid um, seniors last year, so I'm a very young uh, boys team. Uh, Andrew Cacciatore is having a phenomenal, really good summer uh, as a junior this year. And then I drop off to uh, four freshmen. Uh, my next four guys are four freshmen. So um, they're going to step up big time. I mean, they they were awesome, incredible eighth graders. Um, so and they're just they're very disciplined kids. They've been part of the program now for three years. So uh, I'm excited to see what they can do for the next uh, few years with those eighth graders. Um, the girls side, we have a ton of girls. I only have maybe about 18 or 20 guys out, uh, but I've got probably 32 or 34 girls out uh, for the team this year and. A couple additions to the team, uh, a couple young, uh, actually five new junior high girls that came in that are um, real contributors. Uh, contributors. Um, three of them right now I see could make uh, some statements on the varsity side. Uh, two of my top girls this year are girls that, uh, two twins that ran for me as seventh graders, moved to Michigan, this Shelby and Sydney Smith, they moved to Michigan for their um, eighth and ninth grade year and um, they're back and um, they're very very fit so I'm really excited about uh, the girls program this year um, Edwin you've got nothing to worry about we're not even in your league yet uh, so um, but but it's gonna be exciting I, and just a great group of kids my new girls are really like today was supposed to be a day off and they emailed me and wanted to know if they could run three miles this morning on their day off they, they wanted to be at the park and run this morning so yeah, that's exciting to have that kind of kids that, that want to do that. Well, you're hearing all kinds of techniques and you know ways to maybe move your program a little bit forward here at the FACA Cross Country Clinic. What do you personally do to keep the kids motivated during the summer when, you know, uh, we know champions are made in the off season. You got to put in the work during the summer. Yeah, you know that's interesting because I got a, a text last night uh, from a kid down in Vero Beach area that um, wanted to know the same answer. He's struggling to get kids out. He's a senior and struggling to get kids out for his team. They practice at 7 o'clock at night and he can only get a couple kids to come out. I think uh, a key for us is keeping it in the morning because kids are going to find something to do during the day. Something's going to come up. Their movie is going to come up. So if you're running at 6 or 6.30 in the morning, very little is going to get in their way. Um, just got to start out getting disciplined to get up and once they form that habit, and do it for a couple of weeks and it becomes habit and we've had 40 kids there you know every morning all summer long uh, so uh, you know we do little things last weekend the girls had a team dinner team party um, I bring uh, Gatorade and cookies and parents will bring donuts uh, to, to morning practices um, we keep it light we keep it fun we, we go hard just two days a week the other um, days are just easy runs um, we never have practice on Sundays. Uh, uh, we go to Claremont every other week. Um, we tr travel an hour and a half to go to Claremont to run the hills over there. Uh, we went to Coco last week and ran the hills up there. Got the sheriff department called on us for being in the neighborhood that they didn't like runners in there. But you know, we just have a good time. We have it fun, and the kids see that um, 
that I'm passionate about it. I love to run. I love to race. The older kids on the team have that same passion. So the younger kids, it just it, it becomes their lifestyle. Well, you've gone to several camps over the years and a new location this year. Yeah, we're kind of doing our own thing. You know, I've been to Nike camp. Um, Coach Benson and Drosky up in Asheville put on a great camp there. I've been to App State. Coach Weaver has a great camp at App State. Both of those two are great camps. And I've been to Young Harris, did the Warrior Camp at Young Harris. Um, but I have a lot of kids on the team that are multiple. I have like triplets on the team and I have twins on the team. And it just gets costly by the time you have transportation and all and everything. So um, I talked to Coach McWilliams at Winter Park and um, um, Coach um, Wills uh, at Leon. And they told me about this couple places up in LJ, Georgia, up by Blairsville. And um, Coach Wills, Andrew, told me about this uh, lodge, and I checked it out. I went up there in January and uh, found out that I could do it, you know, for $250 cheaper per kid uh, for a week of camp than what they would pay to go to a normal running camp. So we're doing our own thing. We're taking uh, 62 of us uh, to LJ, Georgia next week and uh, running the forest trails up there. So I'm uh, really excited about this new place. It's a beautiful lodge. A couple of weeks, the season will be underway. What are you really looking forward to? this fall? Uh, I'm looking forward to just the excitement of the new kids. Uh, so many new kids um, being a part of our program, uh, going to the different, going to Katie Caples and, and going to FSU. We're going back to UF this year. We haven't been there for a while. Um, going to Great American. Uh, Julie's running really well right now. So, you know, I'm just building her confidence, getting her to compete at the national level uh, where she should be uh, this year. Um, and going to UF, uh, I like that meet. I, I like the road trips with the kids. And um, we're down on the boys' side. Trinity Prep moving to 2A kind of um, hurts our feelings because we like competing with them. Um, that's been a great friendly rivalry um, over the years. So we're going to miss that. But there's still going to be a meet that we're at. So our goals there haven't changed to beat Trinity Prep every week, uh, Father Vinyl. So know that we're still looking for you. Um, but um, we'd like to compete to win no matter what the classification. Well, have fun at camp, and we'll look forward to seeing you first meet of the season, Wickham Park Jamboree. Thanks, Bob. August 31st. Thanks, Coach.